on this week's show, uh, the Brexit note scandal, uh, Princess Beatrice gone postal with a sword, which is fun. And also, we were going to do Fidel Castro's death, but the last minute we've decided that the Richmond Park by-election was of much greater historical significance. <laughs> It's Saturday night, it's almost live, and it's right up a big tower in London's Westminster. It's Sam Delaney's news thing. Believing that God will help them be a better prime minister this week? Guided by divine light, it's London Hughes. Looking for a sign, it's Merrick Larwood. Praying for help, it's Angela Barnes. Plus, our special guest, one of the few people who did even worse than Zach Goldsmith in the Richmond Park by-election, it's Christian Wilmar. Hello and welcome to Sam Delaney's News Thing. Thanks for joining me, panel. Uh, let's look at the big news this week. Zach Goldsmith, independent, 18,638. Sarah Jane. Liberal Democrats, 20,000. Yes, the Lib Dems won a by-election. I know that sounds about as interesting as me turning up here and reading you my fucking shopping list. But trust me, this is seismic shit. Here's why. Remember the 90s? There was so much hope back then. It was a precious moment in time when it seemed that we, the dickheads, had finally defeated the cunts once and for all. You know, the uptight cunts of the right with their golf clubs and their middle management jobs at Abbey National and their fucking apple ties were finally on their way out, along with the uptight cunts of the left with their right on comedy, DMs made of hemp and endless discussions about an imaginary place called Nicaragua. <laughs> In their place came a glorious generation of utter dickheads, from working-class hero Liam Gallagher sticking a Brit award up his bum on ITV to working-class hero Robbie Fowler pretending to snort the touchline at Anfield to the Deputy Prime Minister himself punching a farmer in the face. Fucking yes. The dickheads had inherited the earth. If one moment summed up the shift in British culture back then, it was when throwback Neanderthal Matthew Simmons shouted xenophobic abuse at thinking man's dickhead Eric Cantona and Eric just kicked him in the head Everyone applauded and he wound up winning the league. We backed the pseudo-intellectual Frenchman against the knuckle-dragging South London racist prick. Yes, we, the dickheads, were now in charge. But we must have taken our eyes off the ball over the last 20 years because suddenly, in the blink of an eye, the cunts are back and more powerful than ever. There's a Tory in Downing Street, Matthew Simmons and his mates voted us out of Europe, and over on the left, you've got a bearded goon in charge of a bunch of ineffectual crybabies. It's a fucking tragedy. But then this week, there was a tiny glimmer of hope through the clouds of despair. The Liberal Democrats won a by-election in Richmond Park. Yes, the country's most boring party won an election in the country's most boring constituency. But by overturning the massive majority held by horrendous rich kid Zach Goldsmith, the Lib Dems have sent a much-needed message out to the cunts. We, the dickheads, are still here. OK, the Lib Dems are hardly new Labour in their heyday. Right now, we're in a state similar to Ray Liotta at the end of Goodfellas, where he's in the witness protection scheme, and instead of spaghetti with marinara sauce, he gets noodles with ketchup. In other words, it's a pale imitation of what we once had, yes, but at least we've still got a pulse, and that counts for something, I suppose. Panel, was this by-election a referendum on Brexit, on the third runway, or just on how much of a fucking wanker that Goldsmith is? <laughs> I forgot the Liberal Democrats actually existed. Yeah. I was did. really surprised. Uh, I think basically the country hasn't forgiven Zach Gold Goldsmith for not being able to hold a pint of beer properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and even the candidate for the Liberal Dem Democrats, she doesn't even know what they represent either. No. She's got half woman, half mouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she looks like. And apparently Go. she joined the party because she thought it was something to do with cheese. <laughs> That's what I heard. She's got elected, so I can't wait to see what she's going to do. Has anyone ever really given a single shit about a runway anyway? I mean, it's a shit thing to run for an election on, right? Can't they just make the plane smaller? In it? That's a good They've point. They've done it with phones. Yeah, yeah just make the plane smaller. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Make people smaller. Yeah. <laughs> Getting on the plane. Yeah. yeah. It all makes sense. Is this good news? Because the Lib Dems, last time they got a sniff of power, didn't really do a great job, did they, Angela? Well, 
no. I mean, no, Nick Clegg in coalition wasn't exactly what we wanted to happen. But as we've learned since, you know, I think they were doing a job there. They were tempering the I Tories. I liked him. And we didn't, at the time, we just didn't <laughs> realise it. You know, we, thought we saw broken promises. We saw how they fucked up. But actually, now we've got, you know, a Tory government. It's like, oh, actually, they... They were stopping them doing yeah. anything better than them. Yeah. You liked Nick Clegg, no, I liked what they were doing. I thought he was a nice man. I thought he was sweet. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very much Labour because red's my favourite colour. Yeah. But I really yeah. did like what he did. And I realised that when he was there, they were stopping him from doing... They were stopping Conservatives from doing a lot of shit. Now that it's got, that he's gone, I'm worried. I'm scared. I don't like Conservatives. I don't really like the colour blue as well. No. So I don't really know why... I get why people got so mad, but I don't understand like why they don't like Liberal Democrats. I don't know why everyone hates them. Well, anything's better than the, the Brexit mob, than the Tories and Donald Trump. Every single election seemed to have been won by arseholes until this week, right, Mary? But this is like watching Brewster's Millions, where you just you're just voting for the non-arsehole. Mm. Yeah. Liberal yeah. Democrats didn't win this election. No. People just voted for not. Zach Goldsmith. Which is good, though, because people have been voting for arseholes before, so it's actually a sly win. A, a tiny move, win. It's, a move it's, away from the arseholes. It seems weird that people think that this was a vote on Brexit, because it, it just wasn't, was it? It's not going to make any difference. So, well, I, OK, it, it was like well, those I mean, people we'll get on to a Brexit, voice, but it's but... one last... It, they've got one less uh, MP now in Parliament, and they already had a slim majority, the Tories. In fact... The Tories, remember, didn't even stand a candidate in this by-election. So they do technically you, lost that seat anyway, right? Do you yeah. think it would be good if they adopted that policy in all future elections? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. for that. I just think the Lib Dems are shit, aren't they? No, but why are they rubbish, shit? What have they done to you? Going to the Lib Dems is equivalent of like going to your fridge to make a sandwich and trying to find a filling and go, actually, I'll just have it with plain butter. OK, cool. Mm. Just, yeah, just totally basic. pointless. And I'd rather have plain butter than racist butter. I don't like racist butter. Mm. Can you buy racist butter? Yes, you butter? can. In America, I'm sure. It's salted. That's the salt. <laughs> OK, stuff. all yeah. right. You might not know that, but that's why I get unsalted, yeah? <laughs> OK, thanks, panel. It's often said that members of the royal family are like horses. They're posh, they've got loads of teeth, and their bedrooms smell of hay and shit. But... The most important similarity between royals and horses is that you should never stand behind one, as pop star Ed Sheeran found out the hard way this week when he went to a party with James Blunt at Princess Beatrice's house and she sliced his face open with a sword. I know, it's a lot to take in, which is why I've had the whole thing illustrated exactly as it happened. Ed and James were excited to be invited to a party at Princess Beatrice's palace. I hope they've got an acoustic guitar so I can perform some of my hits, like Thinking Out Loud or Sing, said Ed. Give it a fucking rest, said James. James tucked straight into the champagne and thought it would be a good idea if Princess Beatrice pretended to knight him. Just fucking do it like your grandma did all those Radio 1 nonces, he screamed at the top of his voice. But Princess Beatrice didn't realise that Ed Sheeran was behind her, getting ready to perform one of his hits, and she accidentally struck him across his beautiful face with the sword, leaving a nasty gash in his cheek. Fucking hell, you silly cow. What did you do that for? Laughed James. Yes, all of that actually happened. Oh Ed Sheeran went to hospital after Princess <laughs> Beatrice accidentally cut his face with a sword, pretending to knight James fucking Blunt. What a world. Uh. Sounds daft, right? But it's actually the closest we've come to a constitutional crisis since the abdication of King Edward VIII. Because if Princess Beatrice decapitated Ed Sheeran, he'd be a martyr of the Republic. Unlikely, yes, but for a man who looks like that, but still got to fuck Taylor Swift, you wouldn't put anything past him, would you? <laughs> See, there's no plan in place for what happens if a royal chops the head off a pop star by accident. In fact, Many have argued the monarchy should be kept well apart from the stars of the charts since that time in 1986 when Krista Berg got an erection while singing Lady in Red to Princess Di. But if this is how they bring about their own downfall, so be it. Because if you needed yet more evidence that the royal family is an embarrassingly outmoded institution so soon after it was announced that Buck Palace would be renovated using 370 million quid of taxpayers' money, then surely it's the thought of Prince Andrew's daughter amusing her posh mates by waving a sword above the head of a kneeling James Blunt. Panel, <laughs> is this the best news story in a shit year, London? <laughs> yes, it is. I loved it. I didn't think it was real. I was like, it can't, yeah. this no. can't be true. I'm 
I hate her. Like, I don't, I like, I hate all Royal You people. hate I, Princess I hate, Bitch. I know she's, she's What's so, she ever done she's to so you? She's so irrelevant to my life. She's such a right. basic bitch. Like, she's just, she's yeah. a non-entity. Like, mm. why do I care? Like, she's just... Yeah. Nothing. But th that's different to sheer hatred. No, but I hate people that don't do anything. Okay. And like she's in a position of power, she could have yeah. done something. She don't even tweet. Do you mm. know what I mean? I don't really. Yeah, what right. can you do she for me? She don't even tweet. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> she can't like. She doesn't do anything. But the story is the most hilarious thing I've heard this year. And I'm very happy that she did that. Say what you like about her. She has cracking parties by the sounds. Clearly. Thing, don't no. you think, Merrick? I have got a theory about this. Yeah. I think that if you read between the lines. This is a story to bury another rule story. Mm. Ooh, I reckon someone, somewhere, has bummed a pig or something like that. <laughs> and they phoned up the rule hotline and said, listen, there's someone who looks after it, isn't there? There is a problem. Yeah. I've bummed this pig and someone's got, yeah. I think someone's taken a photo of it. And they've yeah. gone, don't we worry. Need to cover up. Don't yeah. worry, we'll get princesses on the line. Yeah. Here we go. You can have your party now. Can I invite James Blunt? And yes. they could go Blunt and Shearer and owe us a favour. Yeah. yeah. Get that happens, around. though. I don't know. I might be wrong. I still think that with the newspapers, the pig bumming's going to trump that. Nah. You know? No, this is how the horse trade works. Yeah. Right. With it's a the mainstream media, it's a horse trade. You yeah. go, well, look, listen, we know the big pig bumming is a great story, but how about we did something where Beatrice has sliced open Ed Sheeran. Yeah. And, blunt, and we'll throw Blunt in there as well. It's because just part of the narrative. Everyone like, thinks he's a dickhead anyway, so it's like he would actually ask for that knighthood. It's yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's he a wouldn't sort of stunt hit, Paul. Yeah. I'm, just happy. I'm just happy to see the royal family doing what I want them to do. I want them to be making me... Like, if I've got to pay yeah. for them, right? I didn't ask for a monarchy. I didn't ask to pay for them. I don't want them going out and proclaiming on matters of importance. I want them slicing Ed Sheeran's face. I want the, to yeah. go back to the glory days of her mother when she was toe-sucking. I want... Ah. All of that Love stuff. Because yeah. if I'm going to have to pay for them, I want them to make me laugh. Entertain us. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I think that's that role what, should be. That's, yeah. That said, if you were at a party with James Blunt and you had a sword, would you cut your own ears off just in case? Yeah. 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 You know, say what you like about his music, but on Twitter, he's a fucking He's, he's good he's on Twitter. Guy. At least he tweets. Do yeah, you know so I mean? you don't hate him. I don't hate him. No, OK. If Ed Sheeran hadn't been hit in the face... She was obviously trying yeah, to decapitate how? him. Yeah. She must have been going back to build up to kill James Blunt. Yeah, that's not how you fucking knight someone. I've seen the Queen do it. And it's yeah, just a little like that. Yeah. swing up. Yeah, you don't yeah. need a fucking swing. was he behind swing. her? Like, do we know where he was standing? Like, do you know the logistics of everything? Like, was it like a... Well, I just Ugh. showed you a precise... Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Not I, I wasn't it. paying attention. I'm really if, sorry. If Ed Sheeran was behind... Like, presumably, that sword touched his shoulder. Is he now Sir Ed Sheeran? Yeah, she's accidentally yeah. knighted him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Has she got the power to do that, though? Yeah, uh, probably. If she'd accidentally killed Ed Sheeran, what do you think would have happened? I think they should go further. Yeah, they should do more. I think, should, I think bring back the executions of people <laughs> who, are, who haven't got hits. More, more. If you haven't got a top ten <laughs> hit and you're still releasing kill music, them. kill them. Kill them. So one thing we can all agree on is that sword play is back and we're all for it. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. up, I'm up for it. Thanks, panel. I've now decided which of you I'd most like to get off with. Right, after the break, we're going to have our cake and eat it and Labour's losing candidate Christian Woolmer is here to explain why we should stop using toilet paper. Don't let him touch the fucking cake. Back in a bit. Welcome back. Now, this week, we got our first glimpse at how the Brexit preparations were going. I don't know about you, but up till now, I liked to imagine it was something like this. But in fact, it's more like this. A clumsily scribbled side of A4, which a government aide cobbled together that morning during a delay on the Piccadilly line, and then was dopey enough to show off to a photographer when she walked into Downing Street on Monday. Fuck's sake. How are we supposed to get one over on our hated European foes if we've got ninnies like this giving them all our secrets? <laughs> Everyone knows you close your notepad on the way into Downing Street. It's basic data security right up there with clearing your laptop search history before anyone else uses it. My wife's under the impression I've never been on the internet. <laughs> of course, you could argue that the press are equally to blame by splashing this photo on their front pages for all the world to see. But what are they supposed to do? Keep quiet and serve the best interests of our nation? Don't be so fucking soppy. The gist of the document can be summed up in one of the phrases visible in the photo. What's the model? Have cake and eat it. That is not good PR, unless, of course, you're working for Mr Kipling. 
She might as well have drawn a bullet point list entitled How to Make a Mug Out of Jean-Claude Juncker and then scribbled down a cock and balls. Incidentally, this appears to be her personal notebook, which she uses for her general day-to-day -day brainstorming. We've analysed the paper and noticed a few other ideas she's jotted down. An ambitious scheme to train dogs to sort recycling. An analysis of the word Twix, in which she determines that it stands for twin sticks. <laughs> and a really weird poem about Theresa May. We don't know yet if this document represents official policy, but if we're really letting any idiot throw in their daft plans they've scribbled down, then I've got a few of my own. OK, the way I see it, we have got three possible options. Firstly, the Norwegian option, of course, in which we leave the EU, but retain access to the single market through EFTA. Then there's the French option, in which we remain within the EU, but get a lot fussier about where our cheese comes from. <laughs> On the plus side, we'd become more romantic and sexy. On the downside, well, we'd be French. <laughs> Finally, there's the North Korean option. We shut ourselves off to the outside world and bombard our citizens with ludicrous propaganda about our ruler, a fat little fuck who puts his pig shit thick children in positions of great importance for which they're vastly underqualified. Oh, no, hang on. <laughs> that's the American option. And if that's the kind of fucking satire you like, you've got, have I got news for you on the other side, you dickheads? <laughs> Panel, does the government have any fucking clue no. what it's doing? No. No. And I love it, because it makes... I used to think that politicians were, like, better than me, or, like, smarter than me, yeah. or, like, just better human beings. But yeah. they're not. They're just as shit as everyone, and I love that. The Brexit has, like, shown You find that. it comforting. Yeah, it's quite comforting. Uh, Mary, what's the problem with the policy? Everyone likes cake, don't they, after all? I think the whole thing is getting a bit blown out of proportion, mm. because the problem is with politics. You don't know how it affects anything until 20 years' time, and then it's too late. And now everyone's blaming everything on Brexit as if it's um, I hate that, like it's you know some sort of naughty dog, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, someone's pissed on my slippers. Brexit. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. So uh, true. I think we don't know what's going to happen. But the point is, it's not you know it's all very well to write down we want to have our cake and eat it, but we don't get to make that decision, do we? We, we don't get to eat like the cake. If, if you're the if you're the people leaving, like in a divorce, if you're the one leaving, you don't get to determine whether you leave amicably or not. It's the like person saying, who's been left. I'm does. splitting that with you. I'm leaving you for another woman. Can I still come? and have sex with yeah, you once exactly, in a while. Right, exactly. Not and, on. No, and, and, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, Theresa May's talking about we don't want to get to a cliff edge when we get... It's not a cliff edge. We know what's over a cliff. It's the sea, right? What yeah. we're doing is we're wandering into the back of a wardrobe and, at the moment, we don't know if it's Narnia or a stack of old pornos. We don't know. <laughs> right? yeah. And we just... Would you prefer? Pornos, obviously. Yeah. No, Narnia. Narnia's shit. Narnia's great. Fucking talking lion walking around, smug cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> fucking humorless tit. That is not where I thought this was going. Yeah, this but I like where it went, though. I do uh, like. Could this be an intentional plant? Do you think Theresa May is trying to sabotage Ooh. Brexit because she doesn't actually want to do it? Remember, she didn't campaign for Brexit, and yeah. this is all landed on her Why plate. Why do we have her? Can, I, I came on this show mainly to learn. Yeah, really. OK. I don't know a lot about her. You came her. to the right place, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely Why? good how choice. Did, how does she... De how? Why do we have her? What? How did she get there? She just stood around <laughs> waiting for everyone else to knife each other. And when they were all dead, she was the last one standing and she walked into Downing Street. Is she Downing actually Street. officially our Prime Minister? Because I ain't really called minister. her that ever. So a Prime Minister with no election. And there's only so many times you can say Brexit means Brexit mm. and without any actual... Yeah. yeah. You know what it actually is going to mean, and she must know. She must know more than she's letting on about how the negotiations are going. Or you know, I mean, no, no, they haven't started till they trigger Article 50. But even she must have an idea of a plan, but she's not sharing it. And I think that is because then, she wants people to lose faith in Brexit. I feel like we're giving her too much credit. Maybe she don't know fuck all, bruv. Do you know what I mean? Maybe mm. she don't know shit. Yeah. Because a lot of politicians just don't... They just pretend to know stuff, but they don't actually know I will know say this in their defence. Prime Ministers like Tony Blair or David Cameron played everything out via the media because they love talking to a fucking camera. And sh what she's doing is getting her head down and trying to get her head around a fucking complicated subject, but we all give a shit over that as well. Yeah. So she can't win either way, but yeah. that's her fucking problem, right? Yeah. She shouldn't have gone into David politics. David Cameron's gone, got out of this, got free. I hate him! Basically, yeah. he's just done a shit in the fridge and gone, oh, I'm, I'm moving out now. Can yeah. you clear it up? Yeah. I haven't got any gloves or anything for you to we use. Should, uh, the whole referendum was just an ego wank for yeah. him, yeah. right? Like, they should, why wank. did they ask us in the first place? We know fuck all about the EU. If you know who your regional MEP is, you are your regional MEP, right? This, yeah. Why did they ask us? Exactly. Thanks, yeah. panel. There now follows a message from the Right Honourable Jeremy Corbyn. Good evening. My name is Jeremy Corbyn. I'm the leader of the Labour Party. 
That's right. I'm the fucking leader. Get used to it. A compliance officer comes to me to query some of my expenses. Hold fast, I say to myself. You can deal with this fucking bureaucrat. What exactly is a senior morale officer, he asks. That, I say, would be one Chris Akabusi, MBE. I had him on the staff last summer for general good vibes. That man will laugh at literally anything. What was slightly harder to get pushed through on expenses was the full-scale replica Batmobile I had commissioned. <laughs> I managed to wriggle out of that one with old-fashioned blackmail. Turns out this officer was married, but also with a season ticket to Chariot's Men's Sauna in Kentish Town. <laughs> so if you see a Batmobile tearing around Westminster late at night, that would be me, with Chris Akabusi in Robin's seat, laughing his fucking tits off. <laughs> now I'm joined by our special guest, bronze medal winner in the recent Richmond Park by-election, the fourth most important election of 2016. It's the Labour Party's Christian Warmer. Hello, Christian. Hi there. Hard lines on the election result. Uh, why did Labour put a candidate up when you knew you couldn't win? Well, Labour is a national party. We put candidates up in every election. If you don't build a base in uh, every constituency, then you're never going to win there, are you? Tories didn't put anyone up. Well, the Tories did have somebody up. He was called Zach Goldsmith. He was Tory light. Right. Was pretend independent. Um, now, what does the massive swing to the Lib Dems actually mean, do you think, in the national context? Anything? Well, it means that people essentially were uh, voting because they didn't like Zach's decision to vote for leave. It was essentially a referendum not as Zach had said on Heathrow, it was a referendum on Brexit. And that's the, 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 uh, the policy that came up on the doorstep all the time for me. Because these are times where a lot of people of the liberal left are, are beginning to think that, you know, it's all gone wrong and everyone left in, in the West has just become an angry racist. And I suppose it, at least, <sighs> even though you didn't win, we could all take heart from the fact that the evil baby-eating Tory didn't. I don't know if he's eaten babies. I wouldn't say be surprised if he had, but we just don't know at the moment. I just think what's interesting, actually, is that Zach Goldsmith presented himself as good-looking, handsome, kind of nice guy. But when you start to unpick it, he's not actually very nice because of what he tried to do to Sadiq Khan. And in fact, if you vote for bedroom tax, that means that people on housing benefit can't have a spare bedroom without paying 20% of the housing benefit. You ask him, how many spare bedrooms have you got, Zach? And, you know, he's probably got half a dozen in his yeah, mansion. Yeah. And, you know, so I think it's difficult for him to pretend that he's a nice guy Because, you see, he was my MP, and I was always trying to work out whether he was an actual arsehole or just a twat. But I think we now know it's the former, right? <laughs> well, I wouldn't possibly comment on that. You, you wouldn't use that language, but I think you've answered the question. Um, now, uh, I was reading in The Telegraph, Christian. Why were you reading The Telegraph? Uh, because it's a really great independent organ oh. of news. OK, OK. And <laughs> you refuse, according to The Telegraph, you refuse to use toilet paper. You've called for Britain to adopt the hands-free spray toilet. It's funny, isn't it? Because I read that, I thought to myself, and they say Labour's out of touch with the British public. Uh, look, that was uh, an article I wrote. Uh, in the Telegraph? The old, no, I didn't write it in the Telegraph. Okay. I wrote it in the oldie magazine. Okay, uh, actually, there's a serious concept there, actually. Go on, then. What is, what it, how do most people get food poisoned? They get food poisoned because they don't wash their hands afterwards. Right. Well, if you have a Japanese-style toilet, which they have everywhere in Japan and Korea and all sorts of other places, you, you don't have to kind of actually do the business in that way. And it's a perfectly thing, good thing to talk about. We ought to talk about it. The, the, the drains get clogged up with toilet paper. Nobody's trying to ban it. That's a My daft idea. My grandfather did not get held captive in a Japanese prisoner of war camp for five long years being poked with a piece of bamboo for his descendants to end up washing their asses <laughs> like the Japanese. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he's not around uh, no, to comment I'm on it. No, I'm serious, he didn't. I'm, I'm None I'm of that sure. happens. No, sure uh, yeah, the point he's, still stands. He's not, he's not around to comment on that. I, who knows? He might actually have welcomed such a toilet in his So, camp. to be clear, you're a big railway enthusiast and you don't wipe your ass. Your wife's one lucky lady, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't know about your personal habits. Uh, no, they're awful. All oh, right. Now, of course, you lost your £500 deposit in the Richmond by-election as you didn't get 5% of the vote. But as 
you know, Christian, English law allows anyone who loses their deposit the opportunity to win it back by taking part in three ancient time-honoured games. So let's do that now as we play... You fucked up your by-election. Now don't fuck this up with this week's guest, Christian Wilmar. That's right, Christian. It's your big chance to win your deposit back. Now, of course, you know the rules, but let's go over them now for our new viewers. There are three games. For each game, you win £166.66. pence. We have three lots of that here. Win all three and you've won your £500 back in full. Uh, game one is one bounce pint pot. Um, demonstrated here by our professional assistant. Invented at the time of Magna Carta. Christian, you have to bounce the ball once on the table and into the pint pot. If you can do it, you get the first third of your deposit back. Christian, good luck. Come on, Christian. Oh! Hard lines, Christian. OK, that takes your first lot off of the table, but don't worry, there is still two thirds of your deposit to win. Game two is ye elbow coin. You must catch the coin in one fluid motion as demonstrated in our video. Do it and you win a third of your deposit. Christian, <laughs> good luck. Oh! oh well done. I just need to get an adjudicator. Was that technique? Please, it's a it. Christian, uh, you get £166.66 <laughs> back in your pocket. Well done. And here's your chance to win um, a third amount. The third and final challenge commemorates how they used to choose the Mayor of Lincoln. Whosoever could spin a fag into their mouth the right way round shall rule the town. Yes, this one's called the Lord Mayor's Snout. <laughs> if you can do it... You win a third of your lost deposit. And this is the big one because the last one isn't worth £166.66, Christian. It's worth £166.68 because of a rounding or something. <laughs> OK, Christian, good luck. The Lord Mayor's snout. Oh! oh! Nearly. We will give you a second go on that because you were so close. Ready? Go. Oh! All right, one more. We're giving oh, the producer say one more. You've got this. Oh! <laughs> right, hard lines, Christian. That's a real shame, but at least you got £166.66 back. Well done for that. Christian, thank you. Thanks also to my panel, London Hughes, Marit Larwood and Angela Barnes. Now, if you'll excuse us, I'm going to knight Christian Warmer just to cheer him up over the election results. So if you just step forward, Christian, and just get the old sword back. Uh, oh! Oh, Jesus, sorry, okay. All right, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Oh.